The prisoner, a former major in the army of Cuba's deposed dictator Batista. His courtroom is the Havana Sports Palace, filled with the biggest crowd of the season. 17,000 people, including CBS news reporter Richard Bates. This is the accused prisoner, Sosa Blanco. He's accused of killing 53 peasants in one day. Accused of assassination, robbery, and murder. Among his crimes, according to the court reporter, are that he burned 120 houses. In one of the houses was tied a victim. The arena is circular. It has a square in the center that has been set up as a simulated courtroom. This lawyer will defend the accused throughout his trial. The lawyer is a rebel captain supported by the court, and he was a famous lawyer in private life. You have heard the charges that have been formulated against you. What do you have to declare? Everything is a lie. The verdict, guilty. Sentence execution. Castro explains what appears to be too swift justice. Dr. Castro, uh, what are some of the real reasons for these trials and executions? The multitude is always asking for the punishment. Do you believe we can, can we be one year in that condition? You feel that the trial yes. has to be done speedily? I want you to know what happened during the war. There is not one army in the universal history of the, of the world that have been such noble with the enemy. Thousands of prisoners were captured and returned again to, the, to their houses during the war. Hundreds of wounded enemy were attained for our doctors and their lives were saved. Never one man was tortured by our forces. That is what ought to tell, to be told to the world. And these people didn't kill any man after Batista run away because they had confidence in us. This is Stuart Novin speaking from the business section of downtown Havana. Actually, this city is like any other city of its size in this part of the world, despite the fact that just 28 days ago, a revolution threw out one government and brought in a new government. That new government traveled the road to Havana and power from these mountains, 500 miles away at the eastern end of the island. This was where Castro spent two years gathering his forces harassing Batista's government with sabotage and guerrilla attacks, rallying Cubans to the cause of the revolution. Their garrisons were temporary camps like this, primitive. Every pound and package of supplies hauled in by foot. And all of it paid for, Castro insisted. This was his gentle army, forbidden to steal or loot or to use liquor. Almost two years ago on his mountain, Castro told CBS news reporter Bob Tabor he had no doubt the revolution would succeed. It is not the same to fight for liberty as to fight against it. All the people of the Sierra Maestra are with, with us. We have struck the start of the revolution. We gladly suffer all and rain and the hardship of life in the mountain. This is only the beginning. The last battle will be fought in the capital. You can be sure. This was the capital a few weeks ago. Batista had buckled and fled, and Castro entered Havana in triumph without the last battle. The crowd followed its hero through the city all day. That night at his new military headquarters, 
They heard him proclaim the success of the revolution and discuss its future. Fidel Castro with the doves of peace sitting on his shoulders as he surveys the crowd that is tonight celebrating Cuba Libre. The combat phase of the revolution is over. Who could be the worst enemy of the revolution? Who could defeat our aims at our moment of triumph? We revolutionaries ourselves could be our own worst enemy if we don't settle down to the peaceful aims of the revolution. A quiet man cheered by a respectful crowd, Fidel Castro, the man who won freedom for Cuba, making his first address here inside the ex-government fortress of Camp Colombia. But in the last few weeks, Castro's revolution has not been so quiet. There's been the sound of firing squads, more than 250 executions, punishment for Batista atrocities. And some critics in the United States contend that with these executions, the revolutionaries have become their own worst enemy. <laughs> Angered by these critics, Castro answers them at a mass meeting. This is the biggest gathering and demonstration in Cuba's history. Almost a million people are here. There is Fidel Castro, the leader and the cause of this demonstration. The purpose of today's gathering is to show the whole world that all Cubans are united in the rebel victory and that all of them support the execution. When that palace there was a miserable traitor, a criminal who killed over 20,000 of our compatriots, those campaigns were never made against Cuba. Against him, when we had a thief in there who stole three hundred million dollars, when he governed, the, when the entire republic was governed by a group of gangsters, those campaigns were not made against them. In foreign press. When dozens of our compatriots were murdered every night, when the young people would appear murdered in the streets with the tops of their heads, when the yards of the barracks would be full of cadavers, when our women were violated, when the children were murdered, when the police hordes would go into the embassy to assassinate our people, no one made a campaign against Cuba. The plush hotels now house the evidence, crowds of witnesses waiting to testify about the outrages of Batista's strong-arm men. Senora Encarnacion Montejo from Oriente. Her 34-year-old son killed, her house burned out, all her savings stolen. Agustin Oliva of Oriente. His son, two brothers-in-law killed, house burned out. Argelio Arcote from Oriente, 12 years old. His father killed. Her husband, three sons, her son-in-law, three cousins all killed in the same Batista arrest. Juan Alvarez, Santa Rita, his house sacked and burned. Another view of life under Batista, Guar Mestre, businessman, owner of Havana's largest TV stations, looks back upon the Batista era, remembers it with loathing. Don't forget, for the past seven years, we have been operating under fear, under a brutal repression, under tremendous corruption. Those two factors no longer exist. 
There is no repression. You feel for the first time that you can go out like normal human beings and not fear, be shot at, be imprisoned, be humiliated. And we feel that we can operate in business normally without extortion, without graft, without corruption. What more can a businessman ask? Where do you think Fidel Castro is going? I think Fidel Castro has as his principal task to see to it that this revolution is not lost, that the peace is won. I think he will be uh, watching from a reasonable distance to see that the ideals that he fought for are not forgotten. I think he will let the civil government run the country, but he'll be watching over all of us. Where do you think he will be three, four years from now? I think he'll be in much that same position, but eventually, I'm inclined to think that Fidel Castro will be president of Cuba when he's of age, which he will not be on the next election. What do you feel is the main point of controversy between Cubans and Americans today? What are, what are your reactions? My reactions towards the United States? Uh -huh. Well, I think I can safely say that for the past several years, I have been a bit disappointed. You know, I have great admiration for the American people, great admiration for the United States. I think, however, that the United States that has the great virtue of practicing what it preaches has not been practicing what it has preached consistently insofar as some of its neighbors are concerned. You mean we practice it at home? We practice uh, uh, some of these home, but we don't do it abroad? You haven't been doing it, in my opinion. And I think there we find the main source of misunderstanding. Are you sort of mad at us in this respect? I, I have been more than mad. I have been very unhappy and very disappointed. You have been living insofar as your foreign relations are concerned, your foreign policy is concerned, Mr. Bates. I would say that you have been living under a double standard. How so? Because things that are very dear to you, like the integrity of the individual, human rights, free speech, uh, things of that sort. You have ignored them, I think, in describing the Cuban situation. I've been saying, what is all the fuss about Hungary? Why all the fuss about Hungary? When 90 miles away from Key West, we have had conditions just as bad, if not worse, than those that have prevailed in Hungary. To its American neighbors, 90 miles away, this has been the standard view of Havana, the tourist view. To the Cubans, tourism has been a major industry, an important source of revenue for the government. But revolution is no tourist attraction. The poolside cabanas are empty. The gambling casinos were wrecked by the rebels. The wheels stopped when Batista's number came up. One of the major industries shut down, waiting for government decisions. And the biggest industry of all is slowed down, sugar. Sugar, 90% of Cuba's exports. Its largest source of employment, largest area of United States investment. Castro has indicated the investments will be safe. There are 161 sugar mills in Cuba, but less than a third of them are operating. The rest are waiting for machinery to be repaired, roads to be fixed, workers to come back to their jobs, pending some decision on their demands for wage increases. The new government has been working day and night, knee deep in problems, but business and labor are still waiting for answers. One of the barons of Cuba's sugar business is Senor Alejandro Faya. Well, there's quite a bit of confusion in the sugar industry labor-wise right now. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, uh, what you would call uh, people that have been taking advantage of the good faith of the new union. And uh, they have tried to infiltrate their ideas into it and confuse them. And the government is having quite a time getting them organized. But we're making headway. A lot of the mills are already started, and I do think that in the next few days, most of them will start. 
Do you think that the work stoppages will be straightened out before too long? Yes. Uh, those that have started have had no problem. And uh, those that have not started are all being uh, actively, uh, how would I say, uh, they're, being work, they're being pushed uh. by the uh, various government uh, departments that are helping the industry in handling straighten out all the problems. Do you feel that there's any chance that uh, there may be communist influences in Cuba's labor unions? There is a little bit of, of communist labor influence in some of the unions, but uh, the 26th of July movement is definitely opposed to communism, and I think that uh, they have had sufficient warning and have uh, uh, also realized that in some unions this has already taken place and they have done something about it. Well, do they just remove these people from office? These or? people have so far been removed in some unions, and in others where they have not been yet removed, they're very carefully watched. We're sitting in the home of Dr. Juan Marinello, who is chairman of the National Central Committee of the Communist Party in Cuba. With us, seated in the middle, is Dr. Carlos Rafael Rodriguez, who is a member of the Politburo of the Communist Party in Cuba and a member of its Central Committee. How will the Communist Party make its influence felt? Will you ask for wage increases? Well, right now, we feel that Cuba needs generally wage increases because we have uh, inflation, not as big as the inflation in Chile, but a big inflation. Will you have actual demands for wage increases? In for example, in, uh, in this very moment, uh, we are demanding increases of 10% in the wages of the human workers. That will be correct because... The sugar workers? Yes, 10%. Dr. Rodriguez, do you reserve the right to try to call a strike of workers if salaries are not raised in the foreseeable future? Well, we, uh, the, the workers have uh, the right to strike. This will be a workers' position. This is not a position of the Communist Party. We believe that only parties in Cuba are given a, a good uh, possibility of expressing themselves. Maybe they have uh, certain positions against Castro, but they cannot afford to spread it publicly now because the public opinion in Cuba, public opinion is so much in favor of Castro that they don't want to irritate right now the public opinion. Fidel Castro is the strong man of Cuba today and that without him a government no, could not No, that is not the sense of my position. Well, would you explain Well, uh, no, the strong man, as you understand it in Latin America, is the man who has the force to use it, uh, use it against the government or against the people. Castro uh, is the voice of a general problem of revolutionary forces in which all of us are more or less included, officially or unofficially. This is the office of the Provisional Government's Minister of Finance, Rufo Lopez Cresquet, economist conservative. Mr. Minister, I'd like to ask you a question or two, if I may, about Cuba's basic industry, as I understand it, and that is the sugar business. Uh, will the sugar crop get shipped on time this year, do you think? I think so. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, till August to do the, uh, the, the harvesting and, uh, and the grinding. And uh, notwithstanding the difficulties we have now in communication, every step has been taken in order to solve all those problems. So I think we will be able to grind a very huge crop this year, over 5,800,000 uh, long tons. Are the disrupted railroads and the disrupted highways a major problem, or can they be fixed fairly easily? Uh, the Minister of Public Works that is in charge of that thinks that he can do all the jobs in less than 30 days. What do you think about the work stoppages that have occurred in some of the Cuban sugar mills lately. Will those be straightened out, do you think? I think so. Those are just minor, uh, minor issues. The, the government has stated the policy that won't allow any, any strike now to take place on the sugar mill. They won't allow any, or are they just requesting no strike, or do they have some well, teeth the, in the law? Well, the strike is a right of the labor. Yeah. It's, it's one of the rights of the labor. Uh, the boycott is the right of the uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government has stated right now that that right of the labor shouldn't be exercised at this time. What do you think of Fidel Castro? What part today does Fidel Castro play in the government of Cuba? In the government, practically none. He is the delegate uh, 
of the government to organize the armed forces. Are the major decisions and major problems of the country referred to Fidel by the cabinet and the president? No, sir. Not at all. He is a national hero, let me say that. He's enjoying a glory that he deserves very much. He's look, he looked for that glory. He's still looking for that. He's not looking for power at all. Another government spokesman, Labor Minister Manuel Fernandez Garcia. At the left is English-speaking aide, René Diaz. We asked him what would be the government's policy in dealing with the work stoppages that have occurred in at least two big industries. Tourism and sugar. With respect to the uh, sugar industry, the political uh, the politic, uh, the politics of the government uh, as in uh, the general production is to maintain above all the production. Sobre el azúcar podemos decir que la política del gobierno es azúcar, azúcar y azúcar. On sugar, we can say that the politics of the government is sugar, sugar, and sugar. Will the government order or decree that workers not strike? El gobierno no puede decretar disposiciones antidemocráticas. The government will not, de, uh, will not uh, issue uh, anti-democratic uh, uh, decrees. Mr. Minister, can you tell me approximately what percentage of the total workforce is now out of work, unemployed? What is that? Of the working force of Cuba, we figure that 40% are unemployed. 40% are 40%. Mr. Minister, there have been some attempts by members of the Communist Party to work into some of the labor unions. What is the government policy in this connection? They have the impression that the Communist Party has been trying to infiltrate in the unions and the syndicates. Uh, will the government make any effort of its own to prevent this infiltration? El gobierno hará alguna alguna gestión de por sí para prever esta esta infiltración. El gobierno entiende que dando democracia en los sindicatos y garantizando justicia social adecuada, los comunistas no tienen nada que hacer en Cuba. The government feels that uh, uh, just guaranteeing them, uh, constitutional democracy uh, in in the labor syndicates and labor unions, the communists have no place in Cuba. Am I correct, Mr. Minister, that, uh, let me ask the question this way, do you feel that by granting civil liberties to the workers that they have not enjoyed under the Batista regime, that this will stop communist infiltration? Garantizándole a los trabajadores las libertades civiles que ellos no tenían durante el gobierno de Batista, que esto detendrá la infiltración comunista. Seguramente. Certainly, there is no doubt in his mind about that. It's a simple matter to know when a revolution has begun. It's not so easy to know when a revolution has ended. The rebellion has ended here in Cuba. The Batista government is out. The real revolution is about to begin. Cuba has just gone through a, a violent upheaval. And the men, the influences that have been unleashed by that upheaval, will now shape a new Cuba. What kind of men? What kind of influences? What kind of new Cuba? This has been and is the revolution of Fidel Castro. It was Castro who led the fighting. Castro, who made this not a military coup d'etat, but a popular revolution. Castro, whose personality holds together the uncertain structure of the provisional government that is led by President Manuel Urrutia. Castro is a, a brilliant orator, persuasive, fired with a kind of Old Testament zeal. He's abundantly endowed with the high confidence and the humility of a biblical prophet. He sees his role as the guardian of his revolution, and nothing is likely to divert him from playing that role. But now, with the fighting ended, he brings neither training, nor experience, nor any taste for the job of running a government. And his president, Dr. Manuel Arrutia, a conservative intellectual, has no broad background of administration. The seat of power here in Cuba is Fidel Castro's. The burden of responsibility 
is Arutius. So far in this main job of building a country, Castro's power and Arutius' responsibilities have not been effectively joined. The main problem here is economics. The workers need jobs. Business needs to know what the new ground rules will be. An effective foundation needs to be established for business investment. The government is almost bankrupt. Many government workers have not been paid. The people are waiting for decisions, and so far, decisions have not been forthcoming from either Castro or Urrutia. No one has openly criticized the government. Today, there is no effective political opposition nor are there any individuals around whom such opposition is likely to develop in the near future. Anyone who would attack Castro or his president now would isolate himself from popular support. The communists know this. For them, this is a classic pattern. They have joined the parade. They don't criticize Castro or Arrutia for lack of decisions because lack of decisions plays into the communist hands. Today, Cuba's government is conservative Democrat, which is to the right of Fidel Castro's personal philosophy, which in turn is to the right of the Communist Party. There is little communist influence in the government structure, but the tug of war for control of Cuba's future has already started between Arrutia's democratic government and the Communist Party. Cuba's lack of experience with democracy has left this country denuded of honest and trained administrators. The heritage of fear that Big Brother may be watching has made working-level decisions reluctant or evasive. The communists, who have been underground for years, now emerge with a solid core. They're in the open, and there is fertile field. The old Batista-dominated labor unions were led by corrupt bosses who were paid off to keep wages down and to eliminate strikes. Those bosses are now out. But the workers' resentment has broken out in widespread work stoppages in the sugar industry and the tourist industry, key industries. And the communists are moving in to the unions on every level, encouraging the resentment, filling the vacuums. It is the conclusion of this report by CBS News that if the government fails to act, create jobs, to increase the standard of living, to lay a solid foundation for an effective economy. If the government fails to act, popular opinion will cause Fidel Castro, who is committed to protect his revolution, to change the government. Cabinet ministers will be dropped, and those who replace them will come from the political left. We have called this report Castro's Cuba. Perhaps it might be properly subtitled the coming battle for Cuba. You've been listening to CBS News correspondent Stuart Noble and CBS Newsman Richard Bates in a videotaped CBS News special report. The director in Havana was Jack Kern.